Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quintic looking equation. I say quintic looking because we have to make sure it is quintic or not. So we have 1 plus z to the fifth power equals 1 minus z to the fifth power. Now the question is, do you think z to the fifth power is going to cancel out? What are your thoughts? Let me know. Anyways, let's proceed with the solution. So when we have an equation like this, we can talk about multiple methods, obviously. First method is we can go ahead and put everything on the same side and subtract. And this is going to give us difference of fifth powers, right? And we can just go ahead and use the formula for difference of fifth powers. Hopefully you know what it is. A to the fifth plus minus B to the fifth can be written as A minus B and then multiply by A to the fourth, so on and so forth. There's a few more terms you need to write. So we can set it equal to zero and we can go from there. But there's obviously easier ways to do this, so let's not call this first method something that we're probably not going to use. But here's what I'd like to do. I want to go ahead and divide both sides by 1 minus z to the fifth. So we get 1 plus z to the fifth divided by 1 minus z to the fifth equals 1. Now, this equation, um, notice that z to the fifth is going to come with a positive sign in the numerator and it's going to be with a minus sign in the denominator, right? If you think about it, the first term is going to be positive, right? This is, in other words, this is the opposite of z minus 1 to the fifth power, so you can kind of write it as follows. And from here you can tell z to the fifth is going to be negative. So when you put them on the same side, you're actually going to have 2z to the fifth power. In other words, z to the fifth is not going to cancel out, so this is a quintic equation indeed. But it's a very special quintic you'll see in a little bit. I'm also going to show you some results from Wolfram Alpha. Okay. Now, here's what we can do next. Let's go ahead and take the fifth power outside. So we can kind of write it as 1 plus c divided by 1 minus c all to the fifth power equals 1. Now, if you take the fifth root of both sides, it's not going to be that interesting because you're going to get 1. But we want to get more solutions. Obviously, some of the solutions might be complex, so we do need to use complex numbers here. Let's go ahead and wait, wait a minute. What is this channel all about? Complex numbers, right? Exactly. So, but real numbers are also complex numbers, right? They're included in the set of complex numbers. So let's go ahead and just write one as a complex number in polar form. In other words, let's complexify it. And to complexify it, we can basically replace one with e to the power two pi n i, where n is an integer, big Z. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and see how we can proceed with this. Obviously, you could go ahead and ln both sides, but that's not necessary. Let's just go ahead and take the 1 over 5th root on both sides. Well, did I say 1 over 5th? I mean, I meant the 5th root on both sides. In other words, raise both sides to the power 1 over 5. So it's going to give you 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z equals e to the power 2 pi and i over 5. This is what is so cool about polar form, thanks to Euler, because we can easily raise a complex number to any power we want. Make sense? Okay, now, so, so here's the thing. How do you solve for z from here? That would be a good question, right? So let's go ahead and call this something. I don't know, maybe w? And then let's try to solve for z in terms of w. So we can go ahead and do the following. It's kind of like finding the inverse function, in other words. 1 plus z is going to be w minus zw, and our goal is to solve for z, so let's go ahead and put z plus zw together and w minus 1 together, and factor out a z, that's going to give us 1 plus w equals w minus 1, and then from here z is just going to be w minus 1 over w plus 1. Make sense? Yes, so finding the inverse function is not that hard, that's basically what you are supposed to do. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to be using different values for w because, as you know, n is an integer, so n can be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. You could also go 1 through 5, and that doesn't matter. Same thing because this is a cycle or it's cyclic. Anyways, and n equals 0 is going to give you 1. So that's going to be the most interesting case, don't you think? So in other words, this is going to equal, uh, z is, uh, if w is equal to, and in general w is equal to e to the power, 
2 pi n i over 5 and n equals 0 through 4 integers, right? So now let's replace n with 0, okay? If you replace n with 0, w is going to be 1 or e to the power 0. And from here, we can basically find z is going to be 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1, and that is going to be a 0. Wait a minute. Does that mean 0 is a solution to this equation? And the answer is yes, because think about it. If z is 0, right, then you're going to get 1 equals 1. So obviously, it is going to work. But anyways, we're going to look at it from another perspective later. So let's go ahead and proceed with this. If n is equal to 1, then you're going to get w equals e to the power 2 pi i over 5. So you kind of need to think about 2 pi over 5 as an argument. And that would be uh, 72 degrees, right? And if you think about the 72 degrees uh, as an angle, you need to think about its cosine and sine and so on and so forth. But anyways, that doesn't matter. Z is just going to be W minus 1, so e to the power 2 pi i over 5 minus 1 over e to the power 2 pi i over 5 plus 1. Let me kind of show you how we can work this out a little bit. Then hopefully you can take it from there. So now, for example, this one, we can kind of write it as cosine 2 pi over 5 plus i sine 2 pi over 5, and now we're supposed to add 1 to it, but let's go ahead and add the 1 here, and then use the formulas for double angles so that we can kind of simplify this. What is the double angle formula for cosine 2 theta? You can write it as 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, and this is what we're going to do exactly. But we're going to take this as 2 theta, so we're going to replace cosine 2 pi over 5 with 2 cosine squared pi over 5 minus 1, and then sine 2 pi over 5 can be written as 2 sine pi over 5 times cosine pi over 5 using the double angle formula for sine 2 theta. Make sense? And then uh, some of the stuff is going to cancel out, leaving us with something like this. And then what we can do here is we can actually take out cosine pi over 5 with a 2 in front of it, so that inside we're going to get cosine pi over 5 plus i sine pi over 5. That's going to be our denominator. I'm just going to work out one of them. And something similar can be done for this, e to the power 2 pi i over 5 minus 1. You can write this as cosine of 2 pi over 5 plus i sine 2 pi over 5 minus 1. And now bring the minus 1 over here, but this time use a different formula for um, cosine 2 theta, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared pi over 5, because you have a minus 1, that's going to cancel out, and then sine is not going to matter, it's the same formula every time. That's kind of good, right? We only have a single formula for that. And now, things are going to cancel out again, and we can take out uh, negative 2 sine pi over 5, and then we can, we, we can get sine pi over 5 minus i times cosine pi over 5 from here. You've got to be careful though, you kind of need to change the sign, uh, but you can kind of take the, um, subtract this from pi over 2 to switch the sine and cosine and then use the um, negative angle and to get there. But the main idea is basically, you can leave it at that too. I mean, this is going to be perfectly fine and that's basically going to give you the solutions. In the general form, obviously, you can just replace uh, w with this, and that's also going to give you the general solution. Make sense? Okay. Now, this is basically the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative approach. So, with the alternative approach, we're basically going to be treating this like a polynomial using the binomial theorem. So, we do have 1 plus z to the fifth power equals 1 minus z to the fifth power. Let's go ahead and expand it. And remember, the Pascal's triangle, the fifth row, is going to give you 1 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1, right? I hope that I did it right. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Yes, that should be correct. So now, in other words, you can also do the 5 choose 1, 5 choose 2, so on and so forth. And now we get the following from here. We're going to get 1. Let's go ahead and do the positive. The other one is easy. Uh, we're going to get 1 plus 5z, and then we're going to get 10z to the second, and then 10z to the third, and we're going to get 5, z to the 4th, and finally, we're going to get z to the 5th. The second one is going to start with 1, but the sign is going to alternate every time. You're going to get a plus, minus, plus, minus, and then finally, something is going to cancel out. Okay, 
we said that though they're equal so they're not going to cancel out i mean i mean i said they're going to cancel out but they are not because we're not adding them if you were adding them they would cancel out but notice that the signs with the same sign the terms with the same signs are going to cancel out in other words so 10 10 z squared the one is going to cancel out and the 5z to the fourth is going to cancel out Everything else we can collect on the left hand side, z to the fifth plus z to the fifth, that's 2z to the fifth. We have uh, z cubed, 10 plus 10 is going to be 20, z cubed, and then we can add the 5z to get 10z, and the whole thing is equal to zero. And obviously, everything can be divided by 2, z to the fifth plus 10z cubed plus 5z. Yes, I was like, how do you divide 10 by 2, right? I got stuck. Okay. Great, but this is still a quintic, but guess what? It's a really nice quintic because we can factor out a z, obviously z equals zero is a solution. And remember, we talked about it. That's definitely a solution. And that is actually a special solution anyways. That's the only real solution, in other words. So if you go ahead and factor out a z here, you're going to get a biquadratic. So if you set z squared equal to w, you can kind of write this equation as w squared plus 10w plus 5. Set it equal to 0, solve it the quadratic formula, and then back substitute. Hopefully you can solve it from there. I hope this is not too fast. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 100, minus 4ac, which is going to be 80. And uh-oh, we're getting real solutions from here. Interesting, right? But we still have to square root them, so that's the problem part. And divide by 2. Square root of 80, I think, is going to be 16 times 5, is 4 root 5. So w is going to be negative 10 plus minus 4 root 5. And then divide by 2. And of course, you can kind of write this as negative 5 plus minus 2 root 5. Awesome. But this is equal to z squared. Uh-oh. And obviously, these are both negative, right? Because what happens is uh, even the negative 5 plus 2 root 5 is negative because this is square root of 20, this is square root of 25. Makes sense? I mean, without the minus sign. Hopefully you get the idea. So you're going to get complex solutions from here. Yay! And we exp express them uh, trigonometrically. But let's go and look at some results. Uh-oh. We can write this in different ways, as you saw. And then the only real solution is 0, yes. And then the complex solutions look like this. Okay? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.